Hello, YouTube. 12,800 years ago, the climate on planet Earth changed dramatically. It got colder uh, so that the thaw that had begun stopped and the ice age dragged on for almost another couple of thousands of years. Permafrost was f formed. The landscape of the planet has changed a lot. Large animals have become extinct. Mammoths, woolly rhinoceros, and other representatives of megafauna. The highly developed human communities that already existed at that time disappeared. These are indisputable facts. Totally some scientists. The question is, what exactly triggered, the, triggered this? In, a f in fact, the end of the world. A number of scientists, including Vladimir Tselimovich in Russia, support the so-called Younger Dryas Impact Hypothesis. That is, it is believed that catastrophic events follow the collision of the Earth with a large cosmic body several hundred meters across, which arrived at the end of the last glaciation. Not everyone agrees with this hypothesis. They argue, sometimes very bitterly, to the point that they reject the opponent's publications, believing that the volcanoes messed it all up. The American geophysicists who organized the current research, in fact, presented the skeptics with further material evidence that the shock hypothesis is still the most correct one, in short and simplified terms, without delving into geophysical details, comet dust has been found in ocean sediments, explains to the Russian newspaper Komsomolskaya Pravda Vladimir Anatolyevich Tselmovich. It is full of impact indicators, microscopic particles with a characteristic structure, structure and composition, with enrichment of a specific layer of deposits with platinum, iridium, nickel, and cobalt, which are clearly of extraterrestrial origin. The particles were extracted from cores raised from the bottom of the Arctic Baffin Sea from a deep layer that corresponded to the younger Dryas boundary. There was no such concentration of indicators in the later or, or an earlier layers. The question is, where did comet dust come from in abundance in the sed sed sediments? Most likely, it fell out of the atmosphere, which was saturated with extraterrestrial matter after the comet hit or impacted our planet. So there was an impact after all. It is most reasonable to associate it with the catastrophic changes that occurred between the Dryas and Holocene, a relatively warm period of the Earth's geological history that began about 11,000 years ago. It is not a well-known fact that it was the work of Vladimir Tselmovich and dozens of his Russian colleagues that made it possible to understand that the micro particles extracted near Greenland are comet dust. Russian scientists have more than 20 years of experience. They started the research on their own initiative. Later, they were conducted within the framework of the Russian State Scientific Committee for the study of cosmic dust established in the year 2011 as part of the Scientific Council on Astrobiology at the Presidium of the Russian Academy of Sciences. The Americans turned to Tselmovich for help after reading his numerous scientific articles on the study of fossil cosmic dust. He and his colleagues systematized extraterrestrial particles extracted from sediments in different parts of the planet. The first ones he explored were those that he himself found in peat bogs located in the Yaroslavl region in Russia, near the observatory. 
Traces of fallen extraterrestrial particles are well preserved there. Using them, it was possible to identify the traces of space disasters directly and distinguish them from the traces of cosmic dust that constantly falls on Earth. According uh, to uh, the uh, newspaper, without your previous research, we would not have understood what we were looking at in Baffin Bay. Um, Alan West, director of the Comet Research Group and co-author of a recent paper in uh, PLOS One, wrote to Tselmovich. That's, uh, th- that's what the newspaper was trying to say. About 500,000 oval craters have been discovered. They could, have, they could well have been formed as a result of carpet bombing by a swarm of fragments of a collapsed comet. The black day of the northern hemisphere proponents of the shock hypothesis roughly agree on one thing. Um, 12,800 years ago, the Earth collided not with an entire comet, but with fragments of a collapsed one. There were both ice and stone ones among them. As for the location and direction of the main impact or main strike, the opinions of scientists are divided. The Americans believe that the comet exploded over North America in the Great Lakes region. One of the fragments that reached the surface allegedly even struck it, leaving a depression about 300 meters deep. Alan West says he found it. Tselmovich is among those researchers who suggest that the impact occurred in the northern Atlantic Ocean, a celestial body, most likely a comet, flying from the southeast to the northwest on a very gentle trajectory exploded in the atmosphere and broke up into numerous fragments. The largest and heaviest crashed into the waters of the Gulf of Mexico or Gulf of America, as it's called now, in the Bermuda Triangle area. The shrapnel hit almost direct fire first and slightly to the north. There are various traces of a kind of artillery preparation in abundance there. These are the so-called Carolina Bays, located in the Atlantic lowlands on the coastal plain of the United States, which stretches from New York to northern Florida. There are more than half a million Carolina Bays. They are oval depressions, about 15 meters deep, with diameters from 50 meters to 15 kilometers. All are elongated in the same direction to the northwest and contain sand, the particles of which have traces of contact of terrestrial sand with cosmic particles. The Americans once gave us samples of sand from the gulfs, from the Gulf, um, says Vladimir Tsermovich. They were studied at the Baroque Geophysical Observatory. They found grains of sand with deposits and films of pure nickel, magnetite microspheres, and micro particles of native metals, which testify to the thermal interaction of terrestrial and cosmic matter. And this is a serious argument in favor of the fact that the gulfs were formed as a result of the carpet bombing from space. Misfortunes never come alone. In your opinion, what scenarios did the cataclysm follow? The Russian scientist was asked by the media. After the main cosmic body crashed into the Gulf of Mexico, a mega tsunami arose, says Vladimir Anatolievich. Powerful streams of water rushed to the northwest. They washed away some of the sediments in the bay itself, and they brought sand into the already formed impact craters in the hollows of the Carolina Bays. The water gushing back washed away loose rocks from the upper parts of the gulfs. I think that's the better word to use. From the dust and ash raised into the atmosphere by the main impact and the forest fires that began the so-called impact winter started on Earth. It is also called nuclear. All of this is rich in a dark layer of sediments several centimeters thick the same one that represents the late Dryas boundary. However, the blackout did not end there. 
The impact melted North American glaciers. Streams of fresh water poured into the Gulf Stream, stopping this warm current. The situation has worsened, especially in the Northern Hemisphere. As a result, the civilization of the Clovis culture, which was quite developed for its time, fell into decline and disappeared. According to archaeologists, they find characteristic material traces of the culture's existence below the late driest boundary, but no longer above it. Russian researchers, by the way, do not rule out that the water that evaporated and was lifted by the crashing body after some time poured onto the earth in torrents, causing this worldwide flood or deluge, perhaps the same biblical one, and it provoked tectonic processes, drowned Atlantis with its even more advanced civilization. The main conclusion that both Russian and Western scientists cautiously draw is that celestial bodies impact the earth much more often than it seemed. The cataclysm that occurred 12,800 years ago, alas, was not the last. A similar one, only on a smaller scale, destroyed the inhabitants of the biblical cities of Sodom and Gomorrah about 3,600 years ago. Scientists found traces of an impact on them from space in what is now Jordan, in the town of Tal al-Hamam, located about 12 kilometers northeast of the Dead Sea. That's what I wanted to let you know today, and I'll continue to bring you stories about what happened 12,800 years ago, different hypotheses, different discoveries. If you like my research, please support through the links you find in the description to this video. Please like my videos. Please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.